Welcome to Frequency Matters, the RF microwave update series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with Jin Bain, CEO of Mini Circuits. Welcome, Jin. Hey, thank you, Pat. Nice to be here with you. Thanks you so much for uh, talking with us in this special episode. It's a pleasure to have you. I appreciate the opportunity, Pat. I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to that conversation. So you've been with Mini Circuits six months now. You know, how did you first get involved with them? You know, honestly, it's uh, if you're in the RF uh, engineering community, it's hard not to be involved with mini circuits. Uh, so as soon as I decided to become an RF engineer coming out of UC Davis about 30 years ago, uh, mini circuits was one, of, was one of the first companies that I actually encountered for uh, using uh, their parts, uh, building up systems with uh, some of their uh, chips, uh, some of the components. And I remember uh, vividly having uh, their the uh, mini circuits handbook. Uh, at my side, as I was designing power amplifiers in my first job, which was actually a company called Spectrian in, uh, in, in the Bay Area. So I've known them um, all the way back to those days. And then through the course of it, uh, I've gotten to know them better. Uh, when I was at National Instruments, I had a close partnership with Mini Circuits, and I would collaborate closely with Harvey, uh, the founder, of course, of Mini Circuits, and also got to know Ted Heil through the course of that. And Ted became a close friend, and uh, we worked together a fair bit. As we were building parts, we were building up systems and test products for National Instruments, and uh, MiniCircuits was a key supplier all the way through that. Uh, after Harvey passed, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, Ted had to do a little bit of reset, and he started building up the company, sort of the post-Harvey period, and uh, he'd asked me to help out a little bit, and so I supported him and the company a little bit, uh, advising periodically, and I got to know the board members and the family during that period, the last several years, and really uh, enjoyed my time with them. And when Ted decided to retire, they came to me and uh, offered me uh, uh, the opportunity to consider becoming CEO of the company. Uh, we had all the discussions, the conversations around that, and then that ultimately culminated me becoming the CEO of the company. Wow, I didn't even know it went back that far. It's a long time. And so to, as taking over as CEO, you know, what were some of your first priorities? Kind of what's the first 12 months? Well, one of the things I've really loved about Mini Circuits is the culture and the core values of the company. When Harvey built it, he built it sort of a little bit in the image of Hewlett Packard, which, you know, I spent so many years at Hewlett Packard, really enjoyed my time at Hewlett Packard. And one of the core things about Hewlett Packard was the value system. Uh, I saw a lot of that show up at Mini Circuits, and I knew that coming into this role. So, one of my top priorities is first and foremost to make sure that we preserve that culture. And the culture includes a real focus on quality, a real focus on our customers. And so those are really critical elements for us. And so what I've tried to do is make sure that we look at that and we try to figure out how do we make sure that we reinforce our culture? How do we make sure that the culture is uh, everywhere across the company? Now that I'm learning more about the company, it's, uh, you know, we're spread around. We've got global operations uh, around, around the world and all of them have uh, a really good culture and part of my, my goal has been to make sure that I'm reinforcing our core values. Uh, this focus on customers, a focus on uncompromising quality, uh, even things like our no EOL policy, which we've kept that in place uh, despite everything in the market, even with supply chain constrictions and stuff. So we've, we've managed our way through that. I'm continuing managing, managing that piece of it. And then beyond that, you take that, and I've got sort of a mental model that I've created within the company with the leadership team which is, uh, you have to imagine sort of a pyramid structure, and at the bottom is our core values and our guiding principles and the things I just talked about. You build on top of that, and all the way at the top are sort of our financial results as a company in the, uh, in the near term. But in between are things like building up the strategy. So what I've been working on with the team is building out the strategy, really refining that. Harvey knew it and intimately uh, was driving the strategy through the past 50 years that he, he ran the company. Ted developed that a little bit further, and uh, now I have the opportunity to take that, turn that into something a little bit more crystallized, a little more refined. And so we're building that out and then building up the organizational structures behind that uh, while we maintain our ultimate focus on our customers and the markets that we serve. And uh, Mini Circus has a lot of unique capabilities and technologies. You know, what are some of the main ones that differentiate yourself in the marketplace? Uh, we sure do. Yeah, you know, a lot of people think of Mini Circuits as the one thing that they work with us on. And I remember even coming into the role, uh, I had a, an old friend of mine who's actually retired from Hewlett Packard now, and he said, oh, that's a great company, and they have incredible packaging capability. And, and I thought about that, and I was like, yeah, you know, they do. Uh, it turns out that a lot of people have forgotten that we have really good packaging capability, because when he worked with the company, that's what he knew them for, and they were, they were really strong. Mini Circus was super strong at that. In the meantime, there's a lot of other people that know us for our core and wire products, 
uh, the, um, which we call our, our RF essential type products, our VCO capability, uh, but we've built on top of that. We've got a whole lot of uh, products in terms of LTCC. For the past 20 years, we've been investing in LTCC. Incredible portfolio of products serve a bunch of different markets uh, with, with that uh, product line. And on top of that, we've got our Mimic products. We've got uh, additional product lines that we've got. So just a broad array of products that uh, really serve everybody and it results in sort of a one-stop shop for RF uh, components and subsystems. Yeah, you've gone into test and measurement in all kinds of areas. I remember you did the article on LTCC filters, the non-reflectionist uh, filters. So that was a cool article. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, what are some of your growth areas that you're looking at? What are the specific applications and markets you see over the next few years as a high growth? Yeah, you know, I, I think that uh, we've got a lot of growth opportunity in many parts of our business, it turns out. I, I'm a huge fan of uh, Jim Collins from the past, uh, Built to Last. And I think about how you got to preserve your core. And it was a theme uh, both at Hewlett Packard, but also at National Instruments while I was at those companies. And so we do have a lot of growth even within our core products, the RF essential products, which are transformers, core wire type products, uh, some of the, the, the non-LTCC type filters. So we do have growth in those areas. So we're going to maintain focus on those. In the meantime, we're building up our portfolio. We've got a more diversified portfolio of test accessories, test solutions, switches that go up to 67 gigahertz today, LTCC that goes up beyond 60 gigahertz also. So we're investing more in those areas also. Um, and then we've got a nice array of power sensor products. Uh, that's something we're investing in and we're building up our, our capability there. We have some waveguide components now. And in the past, we were more of a connectorized company, but it's, it's good for everyone to know that we actually do focus on waveguide also. We've got waveguide amplifiers now running up to 110 gigahertz, for instance. So we're going to continue investing in that. And that serves uh, the E-Ban markets, but also going into the future of 5G and into 6G, some of those sort of areas. And so those are really critical areas for us. Uh, another one that I'd like to point out is our RF energy portfolio. And so we have been investing in that. It's because we have skills and knowledge in power amplifiers, something that I started, like I said, my career in, in uh, doing power amplifier design, it turns out at Mini Circuits, we've got a lot of capability in terms of power amplifiers. And so what that turns into is RF energy type products, which can service a, a set of market for things like industrial heating, semiconductor, heating the plasma, uh, very cool applications, kilowatts of power required. And uh, on top of that, some medical, uh, medical solutions too can be served by those markets. So we're investing in a lot of those areas while we keep our focus on the core at the same time. We don't take our eye off of that ball, uh, but we build up uh, across some of these new growth areas too. So pretty, pretty exciting in that sense. Yeah, a lot going on. It's going to be great. Well, thank you very much, Jin, for talking with me today and sharing your vision. It was great. And to our audience, you can find more videos at videos.microwavejournal.com. Thanks for watching and happy holidays.